was really out of it. And this girl was at a different table. We were kind of talking to her and she goes, are you? And I was like, oh, half. And she's like, oh, I'm. And then her friend was like, what the f is happening right now? And she's like, it's a thing. It's a thing. To understand what the f is happening right now, we must come to a basic understanding of a few key terms and research findings. Definitions used here were drawn from the good work by the people at the Human Rights Campaign, hrc.org. Let us start with sex assigned at birth. Sex assigned at birth is the sex, male, female, or intersex, that a doctor or midwife uses to describe a child at birth, usually based on that child's external anatomy. Hey, I already taught that. Gender identity is one's innermost concept of self as male, female, a blend of both, or neither. How individuals perceive themselves and what they call themselves. One's gender identity can be the same or different from their sex assigned at birth. A cisgender person is one whose gender identity matches their sex assigned at birth. Someone biologically a girl who sense a self is female, or someone who is biologically a boy who sense a self is male. A transgender female is one assigned a biological sex of boy at birth, but whose sense of self emerges as that of a female. A transgender male is one assigned female at birth, but whose identity is that of a male. Non-binary means you don't really identify as a girl or a boy. This is a very difficult topic that causes some to see it as an imaginary distinction. How do you not feel like a boy or a girl? Well, are you cisgender? Yeah. Well, what's being a man feel like? You can't tell me, can you? Hey, can you quiet down? This might be on the testes. <laughs> you see what I did there? Sean did not understand it until very recently after combining what Grayson had taught him with observations of one of Grayson's best friends, Shannon. There are additional terms that fall under the concept of transgender, but we will stick to these three for now. If you are saying to yourself, Oi, this is getting ridiculous. How many words do we need to describe individual differences in gender? Well, in 2014, ABC News identified 58 different gender options on Facebook. In 2017, there were 71. If you find this concept silly, ponder this. A wildly successful paint company puts out Frosty Mint Green, Spring Mint Green, and Minty Green as three different colors. Although I certainly cannot tell the difference, that does not mean that no one identifies such distinctions as important or meaningful. Paint swatches make clear that there are many ways to identify subtle differences in what many of us would consider the same color. Too far of a stretch? Okay, let's pick something with social relevance like religion. You may think, aha, religion, there are Christians and non-Christians. The world population breaks down this way. But even just within Christianity, people identify with different schools of Christian thought. Catholicism versus Protestantism, for example. In some parts of the world, it is still dangerous not to understand the differences. Of course, Protestantism can be broken down into subcategories, which are quite distinct. Southern Baptists and the Amish both reflect Protestantism, but it is unlikely the two groups would identify as the same religion. But the dichotomy still holds, right? Christian with its subcategories versus the non-Christian atheists and agnostics? Well, actually, no. 
In addition to the atheists and agnostics, the non-Christian category includes Islam, Buddhism, Confucianism, Hinduism, Judaism, and many, many others. How many religious identities there are really becomes a matter of context and perspective. An estimated 4,300 religions exist around the globe, in part because people and cultures realize that the predominant religion in an area didn't feel quite right to them. A dissonance with their sense of self. So, they found ways and words to express religious views more in line with who they were. The number of acceptable religious identities grew, unfortunately not without bloodshed. Self-advocacy to be allowed to practice what one believes can make the difference between freedom and oppression. To a religious scholar or a devout Catholic, the existence of language and actions to define a particular religion helps better delineate differences as well as find commonalities with those who identify as Buddhists, for example. Yet, to an atheist, how many religions there are or the terminology associated with them probably holds little relevance. The existence of one religion, let alone 4,300, may produce no meaningful impact on life whatsoever. So, the importance and number of religious identities really is a function of context and perspective. We have people who stand and proclaim, there are only two genders, trust the science. What is interesting is the science is beginning to point to at least a partial biological basis for gender identity. Differences in hormone sensitivity in certain pathways of the brain seem to be linked to transgender or questioning. Certain areas of the brain in transgender females are being found to more closely resemble the structure in biological females than biological males, independent of sexual orientation. Early data seems to be pointing to genetic areas of interest as well. So, if you want to pick a side and advocate your position, that is fine. Neuroscientists will continue to try to understand to what extent individual differences in behavior can be explained by biological processes. Whether a mostly biological basis of being transgender would be positive or negative, will continue to drive debate of those who wish to occupy the extremes. A biological cause for why someone may feel differently than some of their friends may be helpful, as well as help dispel the notions that someone simply chooses his or her gender and sense of self on a day-to-day -day basis. But a mostly biological cause also may reinforce those who wish to paint being transgender as some sort of deviance that needs to be fixed or cured. As you decide where you fall on such issues, you may find a March 3rd, 2021 post by Riley Black interesting. It is linked below. Riley writes, Science is not going to win this one, when the argument turns to strangers trying to affirm or deny my identity on the basis of biological particulars, I head for the hills like the dinosaurs in Fantasia running from the T-Rex. That's because trans rights are not a scientific issue. They are a human rights issue. There is certainly a lot we could say, and that I would honestly love to know about human sexual variation. The effects of hormone replacement therapy, why hope for bodily changes are so emotionally fulfilling, and more. Some of these things might be wonderful topics for biology classes. Imagine if every high schooler in America were educated to understand that human sex itself comes with a lot of variation. Thinking back to my younger closeted self, that would have helped. But in terms of deciding how I, as a trans person, am going to move through the world, all the information about hormones and biology affects three people at most. My doctor, my partner, and myself. That's all. And with that, I think we can say, class dismissed. <laughs>
class may be dismissed, bozo, but it's detention for you. Join us next time on Where In Between Those.